Hello guys, welcome back to another revisited video and today we are revisiting The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. Yes, this is the third and final movie in The Hobbit trilogy, the prequel trilogy to The Lord of the Rings um, and this is the penultimate movie from 2014, um, obviously directed by Peter Jackson. Now, they filmed these three movies over 260 odd days, so less than a year, and they filmed them all back to back, so basically a year's worth of work for three movies that were released in 2012, 13, and 14. Like, that's class, isn't it? Do you know I mean, you don't get that nowadays. Like, for instance, with the Star Wars trilogy, the seven, eight, and nine, they didn't do that. Like, that would have been much better, and this is like an example of a story that is actually thought out and collaborative. Anyways, it's, it's, it's a really good ending to the trilogy. Now, what I will say about revisiting this, now I remember this film being, you know, it's always lived up to the thing, even the title, The Battle of the Five Armies. It's going to be just an action battle movie, basically. And that's exactly what it is. Um, I felt like the second movie had a lot more story progressive moments in there uh, with the whole Smaug stuff and all that and actually taking the mountain and stuff. But this one just felt very, very slow paced, uh, in my opinion. Um, it was all just fighting. It was all um, the CGI orcs, which I've said in the previous videos that are not for me. I much prefer the, the real physical looking orcs um, that we get in Lord of the Rings as well as in some of the early Hobbit movies. But granted, this is what it is. It is the Battle of the Five Armies. And basically, dwarves, elves, and men must unite um, and, you know, look after Middle Earth. Um, you know, it all just falls there and I felt like yeah it was a battle going on and then we had Bilbo like he wasn't really the central character in the movie in this time I didn't think like he obviously was towards the end and stuff like that when they like ended his story off and rounded her off and he went back to the Shire of course and then he goes then to write the Hobbit book you know so it was like yeah it was rounded off in a particular way it was it was a interesting um you know movie but that's basically it like it, it's very much like we wanted more you know, we wanted more. Um, I mean, the film starts immediately from where the second one ends, which is that cliffhanger, which I think is fantastic. Um, and it picks up with Smaug, obviously, um, being in Lake Town, um, or he was flying towards Lake Town. And the first scene, obviously, is Smaug destroying Lake Town, basically. And we get some, some really cool fire shots and stuff like that. And then Smaug gets taken out, basically instantly. Like So for the first, like you, you had that cliffhanger for a whole year, and then you watched, what, 15, 20 minutes of film, and then he dies. Um, yeah, it's interesting, you know, in that, in that sense. But I think it's one of the, it's a big spectacle. Do you know what I mean this is in terms of, on the big screen, this would have been class. I remember seeing it, like a high frame rate version, I think it was back in the day. And yeah, it would have been class. Um, there was some, some a good fight actually with Azog, who is like the, the head orc, uh, and Richard Armitage's character Thorin, they are like having a fight, and here's a bit where he goes under like this lake, and you think he's dead, but he's not. And he actually puts the sword through the ice of the lake, um, and it's like a bit of a, a bit of a shock moment, you know, of uh, of the film. So you know, there's there's a few little character things happening, and there's a few you know some heart wrenching moments as well with um, Philly and Killy, uh, the two brothers who are the dwarves. They have a little scene happening as well. But yeah, as I say, all the things I'm mentioning here, Bilbo and Martin Freeman is very much in the back burner in this film he's not talking to Smaug and he's not the central person I felt in this film the first one it was all about him and the ring and stuff like that the second one then obviously was Smaug and, and the Arkenstone and then in this one he was not really part of the movie as much it felt like because basically he wasn't fighting and part of the battle I guess so rating right the movie then what did I rate it well I gave it a three star um, it was still a great spectacle but it was like a, a CG fest basically you could tell there were some shots that were like realistic and fantastic um but then there was a lot of shots which were cgi um and it was in that age like i've said where the cgi just doesn't look great in some scenes and it's a shame um but it does look um you know it is a big budget movie regardless the things i have enjoyed about these films though is definitely like you know just reliving this, the world of middle earth i'm really excited to get into the lord of the rings now coming out really looking forward to that and checking those out uh, coming soon and of course once i've seen lord of the rings we'll be doing the rankings and worst to best and all that uh, so stay tuned subscribe if you want to see that but there it is guys there it is there's the hobbit movies if you've missed the first two hobbit films there they are go back and watch those and there we go three star for the battle of the five armies thanks for watching stay tuned for more i'll see you in the next one goodbye